Hello, this is Oliver Blair from Massey University and today I'm going to quickly tell you how to generate a 3D terrain model in um, SketchUp and then bring it into Slicer, enabling you to slice it out of uh, like MDF or something like that with the laser cutter with these prepared kind of cutting sheets that it makes for you. Cool, so here we are in SketchUp and you can kind of see I've got um, Stacy with a, a little plinth and I want my scale model to kind of fit on this. Um, so this is what I recommend is to actually make it to the scale that you want um, rather than trying to scale it and slice it. Um, okay, cool. So here this first method I'm going to show you is to um, generate from contours that you might have. Um, so if you're dealing with actual site data like, like something similar to this, you might have these contour lines kind of set up like that. So what you need to do is um, select all the contours and go uh, draw sandbox from contours. It will kind of generate this um, this mesh for you. you. Kind of see there, there's like a new group that's made that is three dimensional. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of like weird and wonky. Um, so what I do recommend is to kind of outline it, to join all those contours together in the shape that you kind of want, um, something like this. Uh, so I'll do that again. Select them all, and then go generate from contours. And as you can see there, it sort of makes more of a squarish kind of shape, which is a bit easier to deal with. Um, so I'll bring that over here. I'm just kind of make sure it fits. Um, <clears throat> so I want it something like this, you know, on my plinth, and then to kind of to kind of float above it. <clears throat> but uh, I want it to um, have kind of like a, a three-dimensional base to it a little bit. So I'll go into this group. And I'll draw from the corners, I'll just draw down to the edge of the plinth, <coughs> like this, and one more in this corner, and then I'll just draw a rectangle from that corner to this corner over here, and it should generate a base for it, <coughs> and then sort of snap it all together. Cool, so maybe that's too thick though, so what I can do is just move the whole group up, Move the group up, and with the push pull tool, just kind of push it up to the thickness that I that I kind of want. Maybe I want it quite thin like that for this one. It's just like a thin wee piece. Great, and then that's going to kind of line up with that. Okay, cool. So when you're ready to export the model that you want, uh, you select it, and if you go File, Export 3D Model, then make sure you pick OBJ. Uh, the slicer only imports obj or stl files so we're going to do obj right now and there's an option that you want to check uh, you want to make sure that you export only that current selection so you can have other stuff in the model but then just export that selected stuff and of course you want to make sure it's in millimeters when you export it as well okay here we are in slicer so now we can go import and we'll import that model here we are and you can kind of see that it's brought it in and it's got that base to it and it's all looking correct um, you want to double check the object size over here it should be in millimeters and you'll see that it's the incorrect size so you want to change it to original size rather than uniform you want to make it original size there we go <coughs> so that's looking about right now we can pick a construction technique we'll just use that stack slices method and you can see it's starting to work already. It's generating some sheets for us. And it's it's sort of picking the slices and where they should be. So you don't want to double check the manufacturing settings. Make sure that they're in the correct size for your um, laser cutter bed in this case. So which is, uh, let's use the small one. So it's 600 by 450. And then the thickness is the material that we're going to use. So let's use 4 mil uh, MDF. Here we go. And as you can see, it's sort of generated these slices for us. And it's also generated the cutting sheets here. <coughs> so let's have a look at that. We can just go down here to Get Plans. And you can see it's generated all these different plans for us. We can export. Uh, yeah, do pick EPS file, and then we want to export to the computer. Okay, cool. So that terrain has um, 
those cutting sheets have exported into an, a zip file. So we want to right click and extract all those. Um, and it'll open up the folder for us. And right then we can, we can open up all these sheets into Illustrator. <clears throat> cool. So the method I kind of recommend is to open them all up as their separate sheets. And then we copy and paste them into the main um, laser cutting sheet that we want. I generally put them on different layers. Uh, so all that stuff's on that layer. So let's go a new layer. And we'll go one. <coughs> and we can just copy and paste it. And it should all be one to one. And you will need to rotate it here as well, see? Just to double check and make sure that that's all going to work. Yeah. So you can just do that and then that's your first sheet and you'll notice there's a bit of there's some gaps and things here going on so uh yeah you want to you want to double check all that and make sure that um that you're using your material as wisely as you can uh, because you, you don't want to have all this discarded kind of waste here okay so that's one method to generate terrain another way is um to instead of using contours to use the draw sandbox from scratch method um, so what this does is it wants you to create a grid that you can then manipulate with uh, some tools uh, so if, to begin with to draw the grid it's it does it to quite a large scale to begin with um, I'm going to change that grid spacing so instead of being three meters you can see it's quite chunky those like indicator lines there uh, instead of that I'm going to make it like 10 mil and then I'll draw it to the size of this plinth. There we go. So now we've got a little kind of grid that's quite dense to work with. Um, how you work with this is you double click to get into that group and then you can manipulate it with the, um, the tools sandbox, these tools here, so smooth or stamp um, or drape. Uh, I've also got the whole um, sandbox tool set up here as well. So this is the draw from contours and then draw from scratch and I've got the smooth button here as well, smooth button. Um, again, it's uh, quite a large scale. So you see down here the radius is 10 meters. So I'm going to change that to maybe, maybe I'll change it to 100 mil. There we go. Now I've got our little circle which is a bit smaller and, and kind of easy to deal with. Um, so you can sort of just click and then move the mouse up and it can make mountains. Um, so that's one way to kind of quickly generate some forms to be able to cut. Um, and you can work on a larger scale by typing in that radius to make it bigger. So maybe 200 mil. There we go. So that's going to move that whole section up. Like that. Um, and you can make it smaller as well, so it's a bit more um, out of detail. So maybe I'll we'll change it to 30 mil. You can see here I can make some sharper kind of spikes or something like that. Great, and you sort of notice here I've dragged it down a bit further as well. Um, so then you'd want to move the whole thing up. There you go. And again, if you're going to do this, you know, you want to generate that base for it to go around. Um, so Again, it's handy having that plinth at the bottom that we can reference to just kind of draw off. Like that, and then and then basically just drawing lines around as well. But we can draw all of them with one rectangle. Yeah, to kind of generate that base. But that's gonna be a lot of material that it's cutting through, right? So yeah. Maybe I'll just undo all that, undo the last of smooth that I did. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Cool, and it's the same thing. So clicking on it, and then um, I'll show you how to use slicer with a with a thin kind of plane like this. See how this is just one sheet. Um, let's see if this will work. So I'll export that. 
There's uh, another one. There's a little bit more data to crunch for it to create that OBJ file. And then back into Slicer, we'll import the other model. And let's go original size again. And stack slices, yep. And custom size for our sheet. <coughs> there we go. So that's all set up again. So formal. And it's giving us some errors. So it sort of says um, unable to process the mesh because the mesh has got some issues. So you can sort of see it's it's just this one thin um, kind of sheet. Whereas before we were dealing with more of a solid 3D form. Well, I deleted it now, but yeah. So we need to kind of convert this into a into a kind of 3D form for it to be able to deal with. So that's why it's telling us to use the shrink wrap tool in the modify form panel. So if we go down here, modify form, and then there's a shrink wrap button down the bottom. You click on that, and then minimum should be all right. So we'll click on apply. It sort of generates a thickness to that whole mesh, um, kind of basically skinning it. There we go. And I think if we click on this eyeball, it'll kind of show us what it's turned that model into. Yeah, there we go. So you can sort of see it's given it a bit of a kind of thickness to it. You will lose a little bit of the detail um, around some of these points, but overall it should be really similar to the, the, the original form that you generated. But what this means is then you can, um, you can generate those sliced kind of views and chop it up into these bits. Here we go, and it should be, yes, yeah, so it's a cutting sheet. So it's generated 15 this time, so it's a bit more complex. You can sort of see some of the shapes here. We've got to get plans. Some of these wacky as little layers, pretty cool shapes that come out of it. And then, um, as I was saying before, it kind of, it, it gives you the two different um, line stroke styles. One for engraving and one for cutting all the way through. So you have these reference kind of guides and it numbers it for you so you can you can layer them up and, and build the assemble the model fairly easily it also gives you kind of like an animation on how to do it as well so let's go out of plywood and it can kind of tell you how to assemble all the pieces together as well start with that one add that one on da -da 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 -da. until you have your full kind of model very cool very, very cool. Okay, great. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.